Welcome back, everyone, to this series on understanding cloud functions. Last time, you saw how the state of global memory and temp disk space was retained between function invocations on the same server instance, which can be both helpful if used as an optimization or harmful if managed incorrectly. But what happens if your function scales up to run on multiple instances? When your function scales up, it's important to remember that each allocated instance doesn't know anything at all about the other instances. The instances are fully isolated from each other. They don't share memory or disk space, just like the computer at your desk doesn't share any of its hardware with another computer sitting next to it. For example, imagine you have a function that counts how many times it's been executed. Here, the count is just stored in a global variable, but that's only going to be accurate for one particular instance until it gets shut down and the memory is wiped out. But if this function scales up to run in parallel on other instances, each one will be counting only for itself. If you want to maintain the same count for all those invocations across each of those instances, you'll need to store it somewhere else, such as real-time database, Firestore, or some other persistent storage. Here, the function has been modified to write the count to a location in real-time database, which is much better. But there's still one big problem. When you have more than one function trying to read, increment, and write a value like this, they could end up overwriting each other, and you'll potentially lose data. To remedy this, you should make sure your code uses some sort of transaction to make sure that the read and write operations are performed atomically. Real-time database and Firestore have transactions, as do pretty much any other kind of database out there that supports multiple concurrent connections. But don't use a transaction if you don't need one. You should think through what your function is actually doing in parallel, then figure out if the overhead of a transaction is necessary. There's one more issue that can come up when your function is running in parallel on multiple instances, and that's order of execution of incoming events. Long story short, cloud functions simply can't guarantee the order of events delivered to your function. That does not scale in the way that cloud functions requires. As much as possible, your code should be designed not to depend heavily on the order of events received, especially if the sequence of events could be generated very rapidly. But in some practical cases, order is important. For example, you may want to update some records when a document in Firestore is created, then reverse those updates when the document is deleted. In this abbreviated code, you may want to add that document ID to a set on creation, then remove it from the set on deletion. If the create comes before the delete, there's no problem. The set is exactly the way it started. If that pair of creation and deletion for the document could happen rapidly, there's a possibility you might end up processing the event for the delete before the create. This means that the code here would try to remove the ID from the set before it got added, and now the set contains wrong values. So just be aware that that can happen. But if your sequence of events are not rapid, you likely won't have a problem. If ordering does matter and the related events are rapid, you should look into some other way of solving the problem perhaps by pinging a function when the entire batch or sequence is complete. Also bear in mind that, for some cases, cloud functions may not be the best tool to get the job done. Oh, and there's one more quirk about the way events work for background functions. The system may deliver the same event more than once. This is very rare, but it can happen, and your code should ideally be ready for this case. So next time in this series, I'll talk about what you can do to make your functions more reliable. It typically involves more analysis on code on your part to do this correctly. So tune in here for part four in the series on the Firebase channel on YouTube, and I'll talk about how that can be done.